My name is Tim Carter, and this is the Apologetic and Outreach Ministry of Landmark Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas. And just a few comments about the deity of Christ. Uh, Maze of Mormonism was a textbook that we had in the Missionary Baptist Seminary. This one, I think, is dated 1979, which, if you've ever been a, involved with the uh, term switching, the undefined terminology, that's what um, sustains something like a Mormonism and why it would be so difficult. But if you've ever come out of this, which I was favored to do, then you'd find discussions about Calvinism or Arminianism or Molinism quite charming <laughs> compared to the depths of darkness and dis uh, delusion that you can find yourself. But this is a very good work. This is from my good old college days at University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. This was 1979, and it discusses the manuscripts, the evidence of the Bible. It talks about the dates, and it's it's a good book. And here is a little brochure I still have from 1980, warning about the Bible versions, King James version, and the upcoming. Feminist version, fem, feminist version, which uh, this was, I like to keep these things because sometimes these battles come back around and I've had people quite in a charming manner, not knowingly, but you know, no one knows any more than, can know any more than the person assumes they know. So when people talk to me and try to tell me, hey, have you heard about the King James Bible controversy? No, they don't know I've been using the King James Bible since. I was uh, eight years old, I think. Walter Martin's cult reference. This is 1981. <clears throat> and I'll just start here, for example. When you open this book, for example, the uh, conversation that I was recently involved in, or the, I guess it's considered now a, a new schism. It's actually not a schism at all, but it was about creation, the second verse of the Bible. Before you attend seminary, like, like myself, before I attended, I'd never heard of something called uh, GAP, G-A-P theory, nor have I heard of Old Earth. When you get to seminary, then you're taught that something happened here in verse 2, and they go to great lengths to teach you uh, language and great pains. <laughs> uh, you'll lose a lot of sleep. And you'll have charts like this. Your teacher will write for you. Ours did. Ha, ya, become, come to be. And cross-reference genomime. So uh, Ken Ham, for example, says that ha -ya should be was, but if ha -ya should be was, so should genomime. Of course, that would break down terribly in the first chapter of John to say Jesus or the Word was flesh, and that would be an imperfect expression in the Corne text saying the Word was always flesh. It breaks down. It's quite embarrassing. So uh, people who say they need a young earth, they're talking about the soil, the earth itself, the components of the planet, don't have a rationale for why Haya has to be was. It can remain come to be, and they can assert that the earth came to be empty and vacant, if, or formless and vacant, without uh, contradicting the language. Now, it'll break down even further in a few moments, but the bigger point I want to make is that for apologists, this new topic of a young or old earth has no, it's not on the grid. Uh, again, for example, what begins in these notes, in this cult's reference, which Dr. Walter Martin was an early apologist, uh, begins a controversy over the word Elohim and how LDS says God's, World Church of God says God family, <clears throat> and then we get Christian response even what they say about Ruach, the spirit of Elohim. So these are serious things that are under discussion. Uh, Exodus, for example, in Exodus 3.14, and you'll find God told Moses his name, and there's discussion here. Uh, Haya is used, and that's something that is, is a large topic because Jehovah's Witnesses organization says Jesus was created. Of course, all that's ignorance of the language. They don't use the language. 
they tout their translation, New World Translation, as though somehow the credibility of their translation has something to do with their theology, which that's another bogus assumption. But here in this text, we talk about the Word and what Jehovah's Witnesses say. They accuse or say Jesus was created. Uh, so now let's move to the language and why it's so important because you'll hear, um, for example, like I said, before you go to seminary, you're probably King James, pre-trib, which what else could we be? It's all over the world. Hollywood even publishes it, fiction novels. You're probably a moderate form of Calvinism of some kind, even if you just believe, secure the believer, religion will accuse you that's Calvinism. So your soteriology is some type of Calvinism. Your eschatology is pre-tribism. Your Bible is the King James. And your view of the earth is six days. And you take the date in the notes of your King James English Bible and it says 4004 was when the world began. Okay, now when you get to seminary, <laughs> a lot of things will change. Uh, you'll, you'll find some great things, but now my points of contention in the battle lines I have, uh, for example, a former professor, uh, Dr. John Penn, wrote this book, Jesus Christ and the Planet Earth. Now, had he not made his book that is centered his book around Christ I would not have understood why he was bothering with it because he wasn't uh, known as an as the leading advocate of the age of the earth which in this book that's not the bigger point the bigger point is here is Jesus Christ's relationship to the earth and for me the Jesus Christ being outside of the earth and he is not his creation he is not a part of it he was not created and that's why Hayah is so important. We had other advocates who were very much, we learned in Bible and Eight Ages, Dr. John Owen was a, a, a staunch advocate, a supporter of GAP, which used the language come to be Hayah, which is correct, and that is determined from the Corne uh, Greek. But since this topic's ongoing now, of course, it wasn't here. It was not on the grid for me, and it's still not as an apologist. That is, how old is the material that God fashioned? I'm not age dating dirt. We are. Uh, I'm involved in uh, something a little bit that has actual something's at stake if you we don't correctly uh, preach Christ, and if we don't reflect Him as the one who came to be flesh and dwelt among us. Well, let's just start there uh, in this. Corne Greek, which I don't know how to say it, but if it could be a more wordy, inflected, um, I'll just say it, simple language, I wouldn't know how it could be. So here we go. This is, it reads left to right like our English. So this just says, and the word, that's hologos. Some people say logos, which why would I care? I don't know. And this is the word flesh flesh and this is the word came to be came to be that's from Ginema came to be so and the word came to be flesh and here's dwelt dwelt among in among among us that's just a personal pronoun locative case that's real simple grammar you don't need a grammar lesson and we beheld this word probably is better uh, we realized realized then the definite article realized the uh, let's see here the glory the glory of him capitalize that it was a glory as this is an adjective, monogenetic, as uh, monogenetic. You need to know how to translate that adjective. You hear a lot of discussion about monogene. It's actually an adjective. It translates much better, monogenetic. Genetic's a very common word with which we're all very familiar. <clears throat> pa ra, that's like parallel park alongside. So as a monogenetic 
one capital one here capitalize it, that is alongside father that's referring to father god and then i just put a colon here a filled one it's an adjective here of grace of grace and truth so come to be really it'd be very much inappropriate it'd be very theologically incorrect to say was here this that would be unnecessary again i'm not sure uh, dr lynn baxter always said be careful not to throw the baby out with the bath water and i'm afraid maybe halaya is being tossed out with the dirt <clears throat> that's okay it's not people's intention it's just sometimes we can forego the bigger discussion the primary the bigger pri priority that is which is determined by the scriptures so since this is what this says in our first chapter and remember, note this 114 let's go to exodus 314 and this is really now this just reads this direction so you don't need to struggle with this and so this is he said he said and this is of course elohim here power strong ones is a good translation if you want to stay literal with the text strong ones god is the word the singular term said unto moses unto moses i will become who this little pronoun here is who and could be what which think back to our text we just answered what is flesh who is jesus the word so uh, when you're looking at trinity the doctrine of the trinity which is makes the age of dirt kind of silly but nothing's comparable with the nature of god nothing's comparable with the person of christ again <clears throat> i wouldn't uh, have contributed nor would any of my professors asked me to get involved in something that's so novel to the discussion. Uh, they know my lifetime and my legacy. Uh, my history was with apologetics. Dr. Lynn Baxter knows when I came to Landmark, I came here because I would have the freedom to preach the truth. I attended seminary before I was even a missionary Baptist. Of course, that was quite an uncomfortable thing. So not knowing anyone and then being from something called a Free Will Baptist Church I uh, certainly was uh, a sore thumb, you might say. So here, I will become who I will become. And of course, this is why Haya is come to be. It's not even a debate. And certainly, um, well, for example, just Genesis 1-2, just to show you, people are saying that you have to say was. And Ken Hom, who's a theme park director, how could he know any better anyway? And that's not his fault. It's just that uh, you could say, and the earth had come to exist formless and vacant. Now, my hermeneutics teacher is aware of this. Our systematic theology teacher retired, of course, and the pastor emeritus of North Bryant. Missionary Baptist Church in Bryant, Arkansas. That's Dr. John Penn. He knows this. The language teachers know this. It's just that it's it's such a big thing now that people have. And I know I'm interested in is just don't change this. Don't change this term. It's as irrational as changing again am I. If if it's rational to change ha ya. to was which is not there's no rationale in any text Haya has always become and language students know that then it's rational here to say was here it's just the same but unless you're a critical thinker which I was trained to be and uh, Dr. John Owen, Dr. John Penn, Dr. Randy Murray, Dr. Mark Thornton all of those teachers uh, Dr. Charles Rogers, Dr. Don Price David Robinson, all of them subscribe to the expository theory or strategy of cognitive learning theory. And it was a theory that said you present information to students, you engage them in dialogue or activities. That allows the learner to read and go view material 
and then think about it of course <laughs> and then after we practice it's Dr. Penn called it deliberative practice if you don't sit down and practice these things then you'll never master the subject and you can't come back and produce an interpretation so I practiced it <clears throat> this is uh, all my Hebrew uh, notes from school all the verb forms that were conjugated for us by our instructor here's example of types of tests we took and there's my actual grade I did miss two I'm very ashamed of myself should have aced that missed three on this one but we would be given the Hebrew we'd write on these blank pages we'd fill out these strong forms when you do this stuff and you practice it you won't be afraid of Hebrew or Greek or whatever people pretend out there is so horrible and here look there's one that means I'm perfect put a smiley face on it of course I didn't know how hard it would be there's another one I really did really extraordinarily well in Hebrew for some reason I seem to be the only course I did well in and then I learned uh, the Greek much better with practice but back to the cognitive learning theory we were taught to uh, here's the information review it think about it now go practice it so here from practice of years and years years and years of practice um, I will become who I will become and then here again here's the uh, verb and he said he said that is God now responding to Moses he said in this manner in this manner in this manner now this is a, a switch here from he said to you will say it's imperfect you will say to sons of Israel and here's Israel you can recognize Israel it's so common you'll what's good about if you really practice these things is you'll correlate these things for yourself as we were taught to do and you'll see that if as Dr. Owen said if you break down in the beginning of the Bible which again I don't have a concern with age daters of the soil it's just when someone contradicts what the language says from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Haya is come to be in the entire Old Testament. Genemai has come to be in the entire New Testament. That's for hermeneutics and apologetics purposes. That is not for translation theory and practice, which is like the name of a movie I recently heard, La La Land Markism. So, um, he says, you say to the sons of Israel, I will become sent me, and this is Moses talking, I will become sent me unto you all. And that's what he told him to say. So you see, it's, it's too important, uh, this, this, this topic, because age dating wasn't even on the grid in apologetics it wasn't even a topic uh, in 1980, 1979. It was certainly not any banter going on between the... So when it comes to, as we were taught, theology, the greater uh, consequence is not did you pick the wrong age of the earth, but did you do something to the language that won't sustain throughout the entire Bible. Now you're losing, you're taking credibility away from who it was, who it was, the Word, the word here the word who it was the word and then what he became flesh so uh, it may sound simple to those of us who find this stuff after a deliberative practice after being trained by people who subscribe to or advocated the uh, cognitive learning theory called expository strategy uh, and of course I'll cite that and quote those things in the there's a second edition of the holistic holism uh, historic holistic holism uh, interpretive strategy hermeneutics that Dr. Penn developed and we just simply format that but anyway this is enough I just noticed that um, those of us that have been battling in the kingdom work uh, really age dating of the com uh, components of the earth won't really uh, garnish our attention but the language and irrefutably demonstrating that the Trinity is not subjective and that 
who Jesus is is, is inadequate to just say deity. He is who this God of the Old Testament said he would become, and flesh is what he would become. So you have a blessed day and enjoy your apologetics and outreach.